Okay, on the bench today I have the fence off a recent purchase, 1970s era Delta Rockwell Unisaw. And this is the Jetlock version of the fence. I think they went through a few different versions over the years, but <clears throat> this is a 1970s era Jetlock fence. I thought I would shoot a video now that I have it all apart. I couldn't find a whole lot of information online about how these work and how they're put together. Find the parts diagram on, online, but um, that's only so much help. So, and there's some discussion forums where people are talking about it, but not a lot of visuals to go with it. So, I thought this would be a good time to shoot a video of the different parts and one of the uh, problem areas with this particular fence. So, this is the main uh, fence itself here. It's all painted up. So. I don't need that right now. I'm just going to move that aside. And this is the rear locking mechanism. Get that out of the way too. So, what I had to do, first thing I had to do with mine is, uh, this is the locking lever that fits in here. And this uh, rod, the threads are really worn. It's really worn here. You can see this has had a lot of use. So, I had a piece of stainless steel rod laying around, perfect size, didn't have to go buy anything which is great. I just tapped or uh, put some new threads on here with the die, threaded the other end to fit into the, to the ball here. And so that's done, that was good. And um, so I'll put that together first, I believe that's the way I did it. And you can see this here is sort of uh, an eccentric cam locking wheel so you have to make sure this is oriented right when you put it in I've etched a little uh, I don't know if you can see it there when I took it apart I etched a little um, arrow in there just so I could remember which way it faces but then you know it depends how you've got the thing oriented I think I had it like this basically you want to make sure that when you when your levers in here you can imagine it in there like that. Your uh, your bars up here. This distance is shorter than this distance. So this is the when it's in loose position, and then as you turn it this way, it has a camming action which tightens it against the. Uh, it's going to tighten things against the fence rails. So that's how that goes in. just going to leave that loose there for now. I've done this before, sort of a trial run. So we're going to leave that loose because we got to get the next part in first. Now this part here, this is where I had some problems with this. On this part here, there is a rubber bushing that fits in there. And then there's this pin here. I've already got it partially inserted there. There's a pin here that slides through that rubber bushing. And this is the biggest problem with these fences as they age. If you can see that, this bushing here is really worn. It's really distorted. So it's really thin on this side. It's completely cracked. And that causes a lot of problems with these fences from what I have uh, come to learn. So these bushings are still available in the U.S but shipping to Canada where I am was ridiculously expensive. I think the part was 10 or 12 dollars or something like that and the shipping was about 60 bucks. So you might be able to find something. I didn't look around very much but maybe in an auto parts store or something like that there's got to be some rubber bushings available out there that would work. But what I did was I made one. I took a piece of, uh, this is actually a piece of uh, wire insulation that I stripped off some wire, some heavy gauge wire. Um, probably some kind of a fuel line might work. I had a bit of fuel line here but it was too small so it didn't fit. This was a perfect size. This pin fits uh, right through there and then I had like a rubber washer sort of like this. I just put it on there a little bit of super glue. I glued it on may not be the ideal situation but I think it's gonna hold for a while. 
So that fits in there nicely. And this is important, I'll try to explain it from what I uh, understand later a little bit more as we get into this. Um, this piece here is the part that locks, actually locks against the fence rail. I had a little trouble getting this out because I didn't quite understand how it was in there. I thought it was threaded in and I did see some discussion about people um, shimming this part. If they can't get the fence tight enough you can loosen this, put a shim under there and then t tighten it back down again. So I wanted that to be loose while I had it all apart in case I do need to shim it. So I was trying to unthread that thinking it was screwed in there but then I checked the parts diagram and it described this piece as a pin. So that led me to believe that it was just pressed in and then it came out very easily with a couple taps on this end. So there's a little tip for you if you're trying to get that out of there. So I'm just going to press that back in for now. I'm going to leave it a bit loose so maybe, maybe I'll tap it in. Yeah. So if I have to, I can tap that out a little bit, I think, and shim it up if necessary. So, so this piece is going to go in here. Let's get this out of the way. This is the top end here. With it. And I think it goes this way. Yeah. Sorry, actually, that doesn't clamp against the fence rail. This is what the part that goes against the fence rail. This goes against the, uh, the cam wheel, pushes against there. So that's why I left this loose because in order to get this past there you need that cam wheel to be kind of loose and out of the way. Uh, this pin is uh, knurled on one end here so it only comes out one way uh, but you can drive it through from either side which is nice unlike this pin down here I'll talk about that a bit. So it should, from what I believe, is um, it should be driven in from the left side here. So you would drive it out from the right. But who knows? A lot of these have been taken apart and put back together by other people. So look at yours. Try and figure out which way it was pushed in. But it should only come out in one direction. So this pin goes through that rubber bushing. Tap that in loosely now until I get everything back together so I know what's going on. Now this one, this pin here is going to go through that cam wheel. Now this pin is fairly loose. I believe it's supposed to be a loose fit. It is on mine because it only goes in one direction. There's no way to tap it out. So if yours is seized in there, it can be a bit of a pain to get out. Mine wasn't too bad but it did take a bit of work. So I believe it's supposed to be loose because this shaft here acts as sort of a set screw to lock everything. This set screw squeezes tight against this pin to lock the cam wheel in place. But then as it's pivoting up and down, this pin has to be loose. So gonna get that in there so you can see it's loose it's a loose fit but as I turn this down tighten this up that's gonna tighten that against that pin now and it's gonna keep it fairly snug there's still a little bit of play in there and one thing I did notice I should have showed it to you earlier but the hole is a little off-centered. Maybe that's just an accident. I don't know, but it seems like it might be on purpose. Because if you set this... I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but... When that's set in there like that... I don't know. It's a little off-center on the cam, but then it seems... The cam seems to be 
centered against this uh, little plate pin thing here. So anyway, I don't know if it's by design, but that hole is a little off center on the cam wheel. It's a little bit further to the right. So, so that's the basic operation there. You can see how that's moving back and forth there now. There is a spring which goes under here to keep this on pressure. in there before it went in a lot easier last time. There we go. Okay, there we go. So that's the spring. That's in there. To... So you can see how this lever here, this lever action, is going to pull the rear clamping mechanism. That's going to fit through here. It's going to fit pass through that rod. And then this piece here, and there's a little spring in there, so be careful. I almost lost this thing. A little spring there, which fits inside here. This screws on to the end of that. I'm going to have to put the whole thing back together first before I can do this, but the basic operation and the functioning of that rubber bushing, from what I understand, I keep saying that because I'm not an expert, just from what I've read on this, I had a little trouble figuring out what that bushing and why they would put a piece of rubber in there. But the idea with this fence is, and what makes it quite nice, is that it's supposed to be sort of a two-step clamping operation. As you pull this lever down, it's going to clamp the front clamping mechanism to the front rail tightly which should orient your fence pull your fence into alignment because the back end the back end is still loose so it can pivot so as you clamp this down it's going to pull this tight against the front fence rail it's going to orient your fence and leaving the back end loose and then the final little push on it because there's a bit of play in that rubber bushing is going to allow that to push back on this rod and it's going to pull this clamping mechanism which is kind of ingenious as well because there's some sort of uh, I don't know if you can really see it in there now but there's a bar and a pivot point here so it actually pulls I thought it like on some, my other table saw this would clamp by pulling in this direction to pull it tight against the front rail or the rear rail. This is designed to pull this up so it clamps this way up and down which is quite ingenious so it's not pushing in this way it's pulling up. I don't know. It makes a lot of sense to me if it's all working properly. So the two-step system clamp the front against the fence rail orient the fence and then the last little step is to pull the rear clamping mechanism tight against the back fence which should lock everything into place. Hope that all makes sense. So that's the importance of that rubber bushing in there is to give you a little bit of play so it gives that extra little oomph and it's a, bit, a lot of fine tuning to get this just right so that it's not too tight not too loose and that the things happen as they're supposed to. So here's the uh, explanation on that. This is your fine-tuning micro adjustment wheel. That just fits in there. There's a set screw here. Allen key. You don't want that too tight, otherwise it's not going to move. It should spring back and forth like that. And that's about it. I got my little pointer here. I'll 
probably leave that off for now. And uh, I'm going to get the rest of the fence put back together. But that, in a nutshell, hope it wasn't too long winded, is the Unisaw jet lock fence front clamping mechanism, how it all goes together in the parts. I hope that helps somebody else in the future who might be taking one of these apart and fixing it. And uh, if you have any tips on where to find these bushings in Canada especially, let me know because I wouldn't mind getting an extra one or a spare. And um, if you like this video, click like, leave a comment, hit subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.